Welcome to Pure Love Talks. This is Season 2, Episode 12. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, we missed you last month, but <sighs> these are some hard times. <laughs> Quarantine takes a toll. Yes. I mean, oh my goodness. We've been struggling. We've been struggling. I mean, I've been working a lot. Definitely working a lot, trying to stay afloat with the Heal Project and... Um, you know, putting everything on digital format videos, uh, and, you know, just getting acclimated to like life inside. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and just everything that's happening, just everything that's happening, um, dealing with depression, anxiety, um, dealing with a lot, dealing with a lot. Um, we've been struggling together you know um yeah i mean struggling as a world as a nation i mean we have been so last month um we just decided to just take a breather and just chill for a moment <laughs> uh and mother's day just passed and that was hard also you know um so I was thinking, we talked about it, and I was like, why don't we do a episode today on mothers or motherhood? Um, and that's very broad, very broad. Um, but if you're okay with it, and usually this is how we do the episodes, we kind of just come up with a concept and just like talk about it right then and there. Uh, and I was thinking, um, I was thinking, okay, motherhood or mother, and I got like these pieces of paper. And I can take three, and you can take three. Oh, there's one left over. Um, I have a pen, you have a pen. And um, think of three ways that we could possibly talk or think about motherhood in that context. It could be personally, or it could be just motherhood in a larger context. This mother, politically, in community. Or anything like that. Okay. No. Hmm. I haven't even thought about what I want to talk about. Um, so three things. Connecting with your child. Okay, what about connecting with your child? So I should, let me just read all of them first. Okay, so connecting with your child. Survivor slash sinner. Different ways to be a mom. How fucking hard it is. Um, perfect, perfect or perfection. I should put that with how, how fucking hard it is. <laughs> Indestructible. I should put that with how fucking hard it is. <laughs> I think there's a theme there. There's definitely a theme. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Which one would you like to start with? Mm. Well, I, well, I guess Survivor Sinner, because I'm like, what's that about? I mean, I always talk about that, like, in terms of um, what it means to be a parent who is a survivor, but sometimes when you are a survivor, 
It's and people don't know it, or you're not even um, at the point where you're able to like grapple with your own survivorship. It's sometimes read as being a sinner, like a bad mother, a person who is just crappy, who um, doesn't take care of their kid, or doesn't have manners, or dates the wrong people, or does you know things like that because maybe they haven't you know gotten to a place where they've um you know um either gone to therapy talked to someone um uh, noticed or realized that they've um had trauma or you know talked to a friend or anything any of the things that self-care or any kind of healing modality like it's just read as a certain way just like young girls when bad shit is happening to young girls a lot of times when uh people read those girls that are having sex or they call it having sex at a young age when they're being taken advantage of those girls are read as being really fast fast girls you know so it's read as something different so i kind of put survivor center it's usually read really shitty and not supportive and it's really um it's really tough you know i mean all of these like things here are uh, so hard to be a mom that's for damn sure it's really really hard to be a mom and um and, and you could add a whole bunch of stuff like if you're a mom with a disability if you're a mom who's a survivor if you're a, mom, a single you know, parent exactly there's just so many other things that you know you can add to that that make it so much more um challenging you know especially if you don't have any kind of support you know um, or community or family or anything like that um yeah or when you don't even have any kind of clue as to what is going on and stuff when you're just beginning that process of figuring out your your whole freaking life <laughs> you know <laughs> like <laughs> um so that piece um i don't think enough people talk about that because um motherhood is talked about in such a romanticized way you know it's like oh my god you're gonna love it it's such a beautiful experience it can be it can be yes there are moments oh my god there's so many beautiful moments that you look at your child and it's like the love the love and there are moments that no <laughs> there could be moments that there is not that and for some people it connects like that and for some people it doesn't and that doesn't make them bad you know, like, not everybody has the same experience. Um, and we kind of package it in this experience so that when you don't feel it, you end up feeling like a horrible, horrible person. And it just, it shouldn't be that way. You know, like, we have different ways of being and existing and loving and navigating, you know, families and all of that stuff. Well, I think that kind of goes into mind the connecting with your child because I feel like because um, there are different types of families, different types of guardians, parents, you know, adults in your life who you look up to. So connecting with them can be on numerous types of platforms. You know, it doesn't have to be just like on a, how can I say this? Um... Because I know, like, I like, was watching certain shows, I can see how the parents and the kids are always, like, at odds. And it's, like, they can't figure out how to talk to their kids or, like, they're just always bumping heads. And I'm, like, you have to find something that you have in common. Or even if you have to fake it a little bit, find something that they like, that you, mm -hmm. that they love, you know, that you can be semi-interested in or at least compliment them on. Or something that can build a bond, you know, like... Just, uh, I feel like just connecting with them from on any level is important to feeling, you know, mm -hmm. loved and, and it opens up doors to a whole bunch of other things too. If they're just like, oh, well, you know, they're kind of cool or something, you know, I can, right. I can probably talk to them about this. So right. it could open doors if you have something that you have a, a positive shared memory with. Mm -hmm. or shared a positive emotion right right mm -hmm. yeah and i think too like people 
people often have like um, you know, a different take on how different people um, do connect with their children you know like um, yeah we all come to it in different ways and sometimes we use harm reduction approaches <laughs> because it's really it's really fucking hard you know especially in this world when there's so many com competing things out there and depending on the age um, and it's interesting you know because it's like and, and we're thinking about different age ranges here. We're going to say connecting with your child. And I could say the same with you. Because you're thinking about walking. And then I could say with you. And I could say with my mother. Right? Because it doesn't matter what age. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we're always thinking about any relationship. Any relationship, you're always thinking about how you stay connected. Right? Because if, you, if you're wanting that relationship to have longevity and you're not taking it for granted, you're always thinking about how we're staying connected, how are we communicating, how, we, I mean, that's the way I'm always like thinking. Um, and um, so I think the same. So you're saying, you know, you find a way because you're thinking in terms of a small child. And then I am thinking differently too, because I'm like, you're an adult and I want, I want you to think in that way too, like in that, um, like the other day I told you <laughs> we've been watching um, True Blood re-watching True Blood and we were watching it like every night and this was like our hangout time our hangout time to watch it every night and we, I noticed that we hadn't watched it in forever and I just felt like we were not hanging out and of course because of quarantine it's like I've been working in my room I've been getting chronic freaking migraines and I've been sick as hell and then, you know, depression, and we've just been, like, in our respective corners. So we've not been hanging out. And then, of course, regular family squabbles and things like that. So it feels, I feel so distant. And, and, I, and I think that as your mother, I continue to be the one that does the thing as the mother, finding the ways to, you know, figure it out. And then I always wonder, when does it change when we're doing it together? Because you're doing it for Joaquin because Joaquin is a child, right? Because you're, that's your job. And so there's going to come a point where he gets to a point where you're like, okay, now we can do it together. So that's what I want for us. Like, I want it. I think I romanticize our relationship sometimes. <laughs> like, I, 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 and I think that's my own shit about... Uh, family and relationships the way I've always wanted it, you know, because of fucked up things and family dynamics and past shit. I've always wanted, like, I think about us, you know, later on and how we meet each other for, you know, tea in the city and we do these things, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, like this fantasy thing that it's so fucking wonderful. And then I take Joaquin and this and that, you know. Um, and we we have a, a, a fairly great relationship, you know. Um, and, I, and I want it better, you know. Like I want it better because when you were younger, we talked so much. We talked so much. We <laughs> talked about everything. Oh, my God. Our relationship was like... <laughs> I just loved it. I loved it. And it's like, as you get older, it's like I, I lost, you know, it's like a little bit you of clam a clam up. <laughs> and it's like, I know other parents out there feel me. It's like, it's like, and I know it's what happens, <laughs> but it's like a piece of your heart just moves away little by little. And this, it's almost like your best friend just leaves you little by little. Mm. And it's, it breaks my heart. <laughs> And then, you know, you grow up and you change, you kind of grow up, but, you know, so I, I, I want it, I want this kind of reciprocal adult parent daughter connection with you now. And I know that we're trying to get there, we're growing into that, especially now that you have Joaquin, and I really look forward to that, that's, that's what I desire with you, that connection, that different connection. For sure. Mm, I think once I get a better footing 
It'll be better. Things are still in the beginning. Things are changing and eventually, not too long, not like eventually, but eventually. It better not be eventually. <laughs> no, we're going to get there. This quarantine is just making it difficult. But I know, I know. It's going to happen. I know. What do you mean by different ways to be a mom? Um, I guess, like, in the the good ways and the bad ways, depending on whose point of view it is. Um, like, you know, the good ways, of course, is all the sweet stuff when, you know, giving stuff. And then the bad stuff being having to to take things away to to stop certain things, to, you know, put a halt to certain things, so just the duality of it and how even though it's there's two sides to it, it's for the same goal, well, it should be. But How do you see that as being different ways to be a mom? I, mean, I thought you were meaning, like, different, being a mom in a different way than other people. No, I meant, I mean, well, there's different ways of doing it because, you know, everyone's a different person mm -hmm. and how they view the world and how they're going to raise their kids. But just knowing that sometimes, you know, being a good parent might be doing the bad thing. Uh, just making hard decisions, you mean? Yeah, because like, uh, like your kid might be like, ah, but you're like, I'm thinking about it in this way and the grander thing and you're mad now, but later on you're going to understand that type of yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. So the two sides of the same coin. Right. Yeah, that's the tough part of parenting. Yeah, because it's like a lot of it is you sometimes you really want to explain in deep detail to your kid because you love them and you don't want them to be upset with you. And a lot of times that's just not going to happen. They're not going to understand the big picture. You're not going to be able to, you know, like tell them. And so they're going to be so angry with you about the thing, but you know it's for their own good. And that's your job, you know, and that's so hard. <laughs> I mean, even now, like, I have to do that with Joaquin, and it's not even for major things. It's like, no, you're not going to run with the stapler. <laughs> no, you can't swallow this penny. No, you can't drink this bottle of alcohol or something. And he'll just be like... <laughs> and his whole world comes crashing down, and I have to comfort him because he cries, and he just says, like, oh, my God, I cannot believe you would not let me drink bleach. What the hell? And I'm just like, but, sweetie, like, I know you're upset, but I love you, and I don't want you to die. Why? <laughs> so, you know, that's me being a bad mom to him, but a good mom <laughs> in the grand scheme. I see what you say. I see what you so say. he gets so upset, and, you know, he might... Yes. want to whack me or he'll throw himself but then after i give him a hug and we like we we i talk it out you know he's fine and then he forgets but you know for like two and a half minutes i'm the worst person maybe less maybe less oh my goodness Mm. <laughs> but I know that I'm raising a very, very sensitive, oh emotionally in tune potato. So, so sensitive. There's going to be lots of hugging and conversations. So sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby. But, um, um, let's see. The, I think these two, the perfect, the perfection and indestructible... I thought about those because, like, uh, a lot because I don't want to. I'm thinking about the two sides of the coin, um, because I've continually said on these shows that I am, you know, having a conflict with my mother, um, and <clears throat> but I also seem I I don't demonize her, you know, like I I don't believe in this like this totality of a, she is the devil or anything like that because I don't believe that. I see my mother as a you know a woman that you know did her best to raise me and she's human and she made mistakes just like everybody else you know like i don't see those things um i'm very disappointed in some stuff you know um and but um i could also see that <clears throat> in her imperfection uh I, I didn't see her as a perfect person that i didn't put her on this pedestal like you are this mother that you have to be absolutely perfect 
Um, but that I did see that um, I felt that she she should have um, or that we all should have this um, ability to like have a fucking conversation <laughs> or a, or communicate in a, in such a way. I think um, this there there is a power dynamic. There is a power dynamic within between parent and child. And so um, it's really difficult to get a clear answer or communication. And even in this, even in a time where I am an adult trying to get some information. Or, You're a grandparent yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, information can be completely shut down um, just because. Um, but the, the, the idea of perfection, this thing that um, mothers usually have to hold up. It's like you're a mother, you can't fuck up. You have to be completely perfect. Sucks. It drives you crazy because no one is perfect um and that every you know like pe people people mess up and that in that fuck up that we can't also just throw people away that there should be like this process i i wish there was a process that everyone could um go through of accountability and communication or, or you know transformative justice or something to get through so that we can get to a better goal of or what is the goal you know healing um, coming together as a family, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, the I wish it were, um, because um, it never gets anywhere, right? Um, either people say you should have been perfect, you didn't do a good job, so therefore you suck, or <laughs> or people try so hard to be perfect and they drive themselves crazy. Um, so it does it's not good either either way. Um, it kind of bleeds into the indestructible. The parent who, um, you know, can't get sick, can't do anything, can't, you know, because you always have to be on and do all. And that doesn't help anyone. That doesn't help the parent. That doesn't help anyone. Um, I think it all boils down to how fucking hard this is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It yes. really is. And how complicated it is, especially when Mother's Day comes around. I mean, any kind of family function. Um, family is the absolute most important thing. <laughs> Our connection to family, however we define that for ourselves, is the most important thing. It's the thing that protects us, holds us. Um, keeps us grounded to something. Gives us meaning. Um, and it is um, really like this, one of the most difficult things because we... Um, for so many reasons, because of um, lack of the skills we have to have communication, um, because of um, the ideals we have around family, family structure, and where our you know where that comes from, our ethic around it, um, so many things. But something to think about around family, motherhood, what that means especially for people now thinking about becoming mamas right now, uh, parents, um, this romanticized ideal of our parenthood. It is a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong. It is the most difficult job um, you will ever have. And in my opinion, one of the most important. And it is a job you will have for the rest of your life because I don't care how old this woman is over here. This is my baby. That's my baby, and her child is also a, p a part of her, who's also a part of me as well. And how many other children she will have will be the same. You know, it's a shame I haven't left. But you know, <laughs> um, you know, um, so that's that's also funny because we, when we when we think about family, motherhood, and stuff, those things are kind of like a given. Those things we don't really actually talk about what that means. You know. What is motherhood? What is family? What does that mean to us? What There's does your no mother mean to you? What, is, what would mother mean? Motherhood mean to yourself? And does mother is motherhood attached to gender? Because there's no cookie cutter right. definition of motherhood. Exactly. I am trans. I am fluid. I've had my mustache and you know beard, and I'm still mother. Without it, I am mother. I will always be mother. Um, so. Yeah, interesting. Talk amongst yourselves and let us know. Send us some emails and please send us some topics to talk about, especially now in this time um, as, uh, when people are talking about um, this debate about 
Um, should we stay in quarantine? Should we not? Um, My black ass is staying right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, back I'll kitty. see y'all next year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So we will see you next time. We got a lot of wonderful programs coming up for y'all at the Heal Project. So check out our website. A lot of new videos, a new um, um, video uh, program, and uh, just get on our newsletter and you'll know everything that's happening. All right. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.